Good afternoon. My name is Leah Albert and I'm a commercial arbitrator. Today I want to talk to you about the fiduciary duty. In my practice and in my experience, I have come across numerous causes of action in which there's an allegation of a breach of fiduciary duty. Sometimes it's meritorious, other times it isn't. So I thought I would spend a few minutes today highlighting what the salient characteristics are of a breach of fiduciary duty. To start with, let's discuss its origin. It, it is a concept that uh, existed way back in Roman times. So in Latin times, there was a term called fiduciaries, and that is the origin then of the term used in English, fiduciary. And the underlying concept is that there is somebody or someone whom you have hired who is acting on your behalf. You are the principal, they are the agent, but they are in a position where they have superior knowledge or information to you. So typical examples would obviously be a lawyer, and certainly in the context of a lawyer's relationship with you, you've heard of attorney-client privilege, for example. It could be a CPA, and it could be a real estate agent. In all of those instances, they are acting on your behalf. You are asking them to ask on your behalf, and you are trusting them to act on your behalf, right? So they, the fiduciary has a legal and ethical relationship of trust with you. So the three salient characteristics then for all fiduciaries is a duty of care, a duty of loyalty, and a du duty of candor. So typical examples that I see in litigation are situations where there's an officer or director of a corporation. That person in that position of authority, because they have superior knowledge, owes a fiduciary duty to the others of the company. And another example could be majority shareholders owe the minority shareholders a fiduciary duty. Partners owe each other a fiduciary duty. And as I said before, lawyers and accountants owe fiduciary duties to their clients. Executors and administrators owe fiduciary duties to their clients. If you look again at these underlying similarities, it's where one party is acting on behalf of another, where one is depending on the other to act solely in their best interests. So to illustrate a few examples, in Georgia, uh, Georgia enacted a version of the Uniform Trust Code. Under the Uniform Trust Code, a trustee must at all times act in the beneficiary's best interest. For example, a trustee can't write checks to themselves out of their beneficiary's checkbook. Uh, a trustee can't invest in assets where the trustee stands to make a profit. Um, a trustee can't put their assets of the beneficiary in a product where, the, again, where the trustee stands to benefit. And there are laws codifying that under the Georgia Uniform Trust Code. Um, in addition, under the Uniform Trust Code, as enacted in Georgia, the trustee must invest the assets under the prudent investor standard, which is a very high standard of care, requiring adherence to modern portfolio theory and proper asset diversification. Some other examples that you might find surprising could be in the context of employee and employer relationships. A typical example would be where an employee is a salesperson and they take clients or assets that belong to the employer and refer them to a competitor. Uh, in that instance, that's called being a disloyal servant. And in some jurisdictions, the employee must reimburse the employer for the lost profits, but also disgorge all of the compensation that employee ever received. And lastly, an example that might surprise you is in some jurisdictions, once a divorce is initiated, the spouses stand as fiduciaries uh, towards each other and in the context of the marital estate. And thus one spouse cannot waste a marital asset or dispose of a marital asset at less than fair value. And if a court finds that that's happened, then that spouse has to repay the marital estate and bring it back up to its true market value. So those are some examples for your consideration. And I hope these illustrations help you understand what the parameters are of the fiduciary duty.